and follow them. So in the matter of Jesus Christ, I want to see something there. There was election. How you all look up here and say that the vision of this world, how can you say that Jesus was there? Because as soon as I said it, all your eyes looked up. That did not be so. Read them again. Him being delivered by the determinate counsel and for knowledge of God. Do you see there? We are talking about who there? Jesus. Jesus. And this Jesus was what? Delivered by the determinate counsel and foreknowledge of God. That is the definition of election. Jesus was also an elect of his father. Ah, I still see doubt on your faces. And do you know why you have doubt? Yeah. You have that because you are forgetting Godhead. There is Jesus and there is the Christ. Always put this at the back of your mind. Jesus was a man. 100% man. As I always tell you, even to make you laugh, the only way you are looking at me, and if Jesus were to be standing here now, we know he is here by his spirit. No power of hell can make me not to believe that Jesus is here by his spirit. Because I know that I cannot say these things I'm saying, but then the spirit of God is saying them with me. This morning, and of course, you know, I had this problem with my Wonderful wife again last night. Said, when I go to sleep, look at your feet, they are swollen. I said, Don't worry, I'll put down the lights. Now the bed on my desk now. I said, That is not even good enough. When you come back to bed, you can sit up and sit up. I finished it earlier. I feel I went I want to have to have my back my back this morning. I usually have the television on listening to various stations and programs. And you see, one man decided to speak. You know what he's talking about? Romans 8:29. I just put my head down. I said, God, I thank you. I yeah, just confirmed it to me that it was right. When I brought the certain someone I wanted to preach, and I just took up this election within almost just uh, at six hours. So, Jesus is man. Just that he didn't have labor, like you and I have labor. Jesus didn't have. He didn't have because he took nothing from Mary. There was no other like her God. Other than that, everything I am as a male, human being, Jesus had it. He was a man. And that is what was inside of Mary's womb. That child in Mary's womb was not Christ. Do you understand? But that child is the one who will be Christ. That's why when the angel came, he said to, to Mary and Joseph, that man, his name will be Jesus. And then added, and he will be the Christ. But today we just say Jesus Christ. I don't know what it's time to say Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is a short form of the name. The real thing is Jesus who is the Christ, or Jesus the Christ, and we shall it be to Jesus Christ. So this Jesus, who be the one to carry the blood that will be able to cleanse, that will be able to cleanse the, 
the uh, the bloodline of man. was foreknown to God, to Elohim. That for Elohim to be our redeemer and our savior, there had to be a Jesus. Therefore, he was an elect of God, foreknown to God. And that's what you read in the last so read that scripture again. Him being delivered by the determinate counsel and foreknowledge of God, mm -hmm. you have taken and by wicked hands have crucified and slain. So, okay, we've got that. So, somebody now read Romans 8 28 29. All things work together for good. You have to like now. Yes. Okay, we know. And we know that all things work together for good. To them that love good. To them who are the called according to his purpose. For whom he did for no, he also did to the ordinance. To be conformed into the image of the soul. That he might be the best one among the many brothers. Amen. I have a question here. I will read it when I'm through with four minutes. Please be patient with me. The question is this. Is it possible to have predestination without election? That's the question. So I'll answer it, but let me be through with four minutes. Okay? So we read the scriptures. In First Peter 1, 2, can somebody just read that quickly? Let Elect, according to the full knowledge of God the Father, mm -hmm. true sanctification of the Spirit, mm -hmm. unto obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Grace unto you and peace be multiplied. Yeah. So you see, we see first, first, first Peter 1 or 2. You remember Acts, which we just learned concerning Jesus, right? Yes. Okay. In these two scriptures, you will see that God saw ahead that he will have to send a savior to redeem man that is funny in the kind of Eden. Did God know that Adam and Eve who fall in the garden of Eden or not? Did you know? Yeah. He knew before they fell. True or false? Yeah. When did God know? Yeah. From before the foundation of the world. That is where this election thing takes place. That's why it took place at that time. Your election, my election. Did not take place the day he went to the church that the other side changed it. Uh -uh. It already took place there when there was still nothing in creation. When this was all in the great mind of Elohim, before there was anything, even the slightest atom almost ever created. In his great mind, Elohim had already concluded that he would be savior. He will be redeemer. Today, you and I, when we talk about savior and redeemer, who do we call? Jesus. But remember, Jehovah, because of time, we cannot go to it, but go to Isaiah 43. You'll see it. Around Isaiah 43, 10 or so. Jehovah said he will be the redeemer he will be the savior. Okay, okay. Let's go there quickly. Isaiah 43. When I look at your faces, that makes me know whether I should 
still the much up or just pass up. Isaiah 43. Somebody are going to read for me now. That's, I think, 10 and D. Okay, Isaiah 43, verse 10, read. Ye are my witnesses. Ye are my witnesses, said the Lord, and my servant, whom I have chosen, that ye may know and believe me and understand that I am he. Before me, there was no God born. Neither shall there be any after. I, even I, am the Lord, and beside me there is no Savior. Do you see them? Who was talking there? Jehovah, the Lord God Almighty. And he said, He, the I am the Savior. Beside me, there is no other Savior. Who was talking? Was that Jesus the Christ talking? No. To God, you are God. The I am the Savior. And there is no other Savior besides me. Go to verse 14. God said the Lord. God said the Lord. Your Redeemer. Your Redeemer. The only one of Israel. Oh, Paris, God said the Lord. That's Jehovah, your Redeemer. The only one of Israel. Okay, stop there. You can see. Jehovah. Call himself Savior. Call himself Redeemer. And you are lying to me. When we talk about Redeemer, when we talk about Savior, who do we call? Who do we think? Jesus Christ. All right? Okay. So, you see now, in what we are doing on this matter now. So, when he was elderly, he knew he was going to be this, man, was going to be this. So, if it has to be a redeemer, it has to be a savior, something will have to go wrong for him to come and redeem and play savior. So, Adam and Eve being the kind of Eden, God already knew that they were going to fall. And he knew they were going to fall through the serpent that will be in the same place with them. Does that mean it was God who made Adam and Eve to fall? So you understand? We'll come to all of that during this special thing. Huh? Yes. He knew, he knew, he knew. He put the serpent there. If there was no serpent, you are not thinking now, just think, just think, just think. If there was no serpent there, would Adam and Eve have fallen? That is as much you and I know. Do you understand? But God says, I will be a redeemer, I will be a savior. If there was no serpent there, there will still be something there that will make them fall. Why? Because this God, this Jehovah, will be a redeemer. He will be a savior. Nothing will change that. Whatever he had decided to be must come to pass. Therefore, if that was going to happen, What will go wrong with the Garden of Eden is something that will affect the bloodline of man. And you and I know that the Bible says, and even medical science concurs, that the life of man is where in the blood. The Bible says tells you that. Medical science tells you that. Life is in the blood. That's what I say. Don't, uh, don't, shed, uh, don't shed blood. Shed blood, that means you take life. So God knew what was going to happen before 
is something that will affect life. And I'm asking you, George, if you talk, one up, can it affect your life? If I give you a basket of apples now, what I do is to say, thank you, thank you very much. And you sit down and you will <clears throat> work 25. And he says, Daddy, can you make it a habit? And you give me a basket every time. There is no way talking an apple can affect the bloodline of man. Because we are talking about life here. Yeah. If we are talking about that, it means there will be birth. There can be no life unless there is birth, true or false. Therefore, you know now that what happened in the Garden of Eden was just sex and all true. <laughs> Mother Eve having sex with serpent, who was possessed at that time by Satan. It was Satan talking through serpent in order to deceive him. By that way, they fell. To enable God to be able to do his work, to, to be able to, his attribute of redeemer and the savior would then come to him. And that means there has to be bloodshed. Because without the shedding of blood, there can be no remission of sin. He demonstrated it in the Garden of Eden. When Adam and Eve covered themselves with fig leaves, it was their own way of saying to God, I am sorry, we are sorry, we have done wrong. They repented of what they did, no question about that. That is why both of them, Adam and Eve, are in heaven today. Don't believe those who are telling that Adam and Eve are here because they disobeyed God. That's a lie. They didn't disobey, they did. But they repented. And that was the sign of repentance when they went and hid themselves and covered their bodies with the leaves. Do you notice that? Since people say they jumped up, did they cover their mouth? Because it's with mouth you chop up. Is there another way you can chop up? It's only with your mouth. They didn't cover their mouth. What did they cover? They covered their private parts to show you that that is the portion what they used to mess up. And when God came, he taught the nonsense of them. And them and Eve introduced religion. And religion is not of God. Religion is not of God. For which reason, the nomination, therefore, is not of God, because the nomination is religion. God showed them what was acceptable to him. And what was acceptable to him was sacrifice in which there had been blood. Why? Because what they did wrong was that they polluted the blood of mankind. And so that blood must be cleansed so that mankind will now be able to have relationship with God. Unfortunately, the only uh, of blood available at that time was only blood of animals. Because you know that air that God did did not have blood. You know that water did not have blood. Trees did not have blood. Ground did not have blood. Sun, no blood. Moon, no blood. Huh? Fire. 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 Fire, no blood. Nothing. Only the birds and animals could have blood. But those were blood, that was blood that was inferior to the blood of man. And so you cannot use inferior blood to clean superior blood. Therefore, superior blood must come from somewhere. Everything in creation was already eliminated. It had the blood. Therefore, the blood must come from God himself. 
And that's the only thing that was left. And that means for God to do it, God is a spirit. And he says, I'm not man. It's very clear, I think it's a spirit. Therefore, there has to be a man who will not pass through the sexual act of man to produce, before he's produced, must be a man who's totally free of copulation in order to come into existence. And that can only be God himself. And that's why he said the Holy Spirit. And who's the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit is not against God. Yeah? Holy Spirit. God is holy. God is his spirit. Therefore, the Holy Spirit. End of story. There are no three persons in one God. There are no foolishness of theology. So you see, God therefore knew at that time that there would be a man who does God in the flesh. That is when Jesus was made an elect of God. Do you catch that now, church? So you don't know Jesus was an elect of God. God. Okay. So God saw ahead that he will have to send a savior to redeem man from the fall in the time of Eden. And you also want to know, my brethren, that there's no individual chosen or elected or for no or predestinated to be saved or lost without church, listen, nobody, no individual, no group of people, whether you are, whatever name you, how much of the scripture you look, whether you call it elect or chosen, or predestinated by whatever word you go, such a person cannot be saved, cannot be lost without his personal choice, uh, choice and responsibility in the matter. Now, that answers some of these questions earlier. I'm talking about election. This election is only by God. I cannot call myself, I cannot do election by myself. You cannot do election by yourself. Only God will do it. Do we accept this or not? Yes. God accepts. However, even though that is the fact, I'm also saying to you that that election, that predestination, by whatever they used to call, used to choose to call it, it cannot happen unless you and I have our choice in the matter choice to be saved or choice to be lost. We must bear responsibility in the matter. Because God's foreknowledge can only be on what God has foreknown that you are going to choose. All right? Let's take a practical example. Those twins, those who must be in the Bible, this one, Jacob. Bible says, while they were still in the womb of their mother, God said, Esau, I hate you. Was he born? He wasn't in the womb. God said, 
He saw I ate. Jacob I love. When they were born, finally when they came into existence, of the two children, Esau and Jacob, who was the good boy? Who was the bad boy? Who was the good? Esau. Who was the bad? Esau. Who did God say I hate? Esau. The good boy. Who did God say I love? Esau. The bad guy. Thank you. <laughs> How do you explain this? Two, two, two souls in the womb of their mother. God said, Esau, I hate you. When they were born, Esau was the real good boy in the house. Jacob, I love. When they were born, he was the real original four born nine. Yeah, who yeah, who died? And God said, I know. What is the difference? Yes, sir. It is election, but remember, election is based on God's four knowledge. As a step for marriage. God knows the end right at the beginning. For those who say, you know, Christian Bible, you know, talk to us, I could God say, uh, it's all, it's all, it's all, I hate them. So I said, don't talk to me, talk, to, talk directly to God and tell him he's partial. I said, no people talk and you talk and yourself. You look at today, that is the reason that when I say some things I say, some people say I'm talking about this. But the truth is, yes, yes. Already already salvation as You if you are an elect of God, eh? Yeah? You were already elected before you came into the world. Because he made you an elect of his from before the foundation of the world. Yes, it's a bit tough. But remember that election is based on the full knowledge of God. His full knowledge. He's on Jacob. Man only knew that twins, a set of twins, a set was born. But God knew that when this will grow, when they will grow, this one that is bad now, making all the mayo and all that called Jacob, he is the one who will be thinking about me, who will be looking for what. My spirit is saying to you. The other one is not going to care about that. He's not going to care about the things of the world. And if you decide to go Ghana, if you decide to go Ghana, how are you going to blame the fruit of the spirit? Is it possible? No. So did God know? That when they will not be on the earth, did God know that Esau was going to turn away from him or not? He knew. Did God know that Jacob will come to him or not? He knew. So he was already telling human beings that never mind what they are going to do when they first come home. Their end is that Esau will not go along with him. But Jacob will go along with him. Never mind what he's doing now. Oh, you could have written me off. 
If you knew me as a young man, the life I lived, wine, women, song, party here, party there. Would you believe I'm be preaching to them? There's no way you believe. But was God not seeing me doing all those rubbish? He was seeing me. And yet he knew that when you finish doing the rubbish, you will come to go home. And you begin to study days into the night. You won't sleep, even in old age, because you must preach my word. But if you want that means you remember the nonsense you were doing before. Yes. 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 But that brother was angry. Okay? Yes. He was Jacob. The angry one. Yeah, was Jacob. Uh, no, he was uh, uh, Esau. Okay. Daddy and the one. Do you know you work here? I'm honest lawyer. Anything you want done, I do it. And that guy, all he just like was to talk, ooh, 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 take money, go out, come spend, come back, take it, go out, spend. How can you not be doing after he's taking his own inheritance and gone and use up everything? Now he's coming back. I, I look at the party. Have you ever done party for me? Do you see the spirit talking to me? Is that the spirit of a spiritual man? Uh, George, I will not answer well because it would have been like that, but that. that's why you couldn't answer well. <laughs> because the brother, uh, the brother yes, the other one took his own part and left. Yes, yes. Okay. he came back as a human being. So that brother was feeling bad that all mm. this why I'm here, nothing is being done for me. Uh -huh. This one just come back. And he was feeling bad. Should he be rejoicing with his uh, brother? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yes. The brother messed up. If he did not rejoice, does it mean he wanted the brother to be dead? Yes. If he was not happy that the brother came back, what was the other alternative? Let him die. Yeah. yeah. So you see, that boy finished everything. Then he came back. He came back and he said, Father, look, I am not worth anything. I'm not here now as your son again. So forget about that. I don't have anything to come and tell you. What I'm saying, just let me be a servant. Yes, just let me be a servant. I have now seen the way this one believes is already in the way and therefore is going to play God. Yes, we're going to ask a question. I know. Oh, you have? Okay. So you see, God knew about this one. So when God gives you election, for him, for you, for me to be an elect of God, there is a part for us in it, which is we accept to follow the will of God. Otherwise, why would you leave your homes this morning with this kind of rain that fell today and you start coming here? Why did you stay back? Did I call you? Did I phone you to say, make you come with no matter how before? Who took the decision? Yeah. 
You took that show yourself. Do you see your own part in it now? There's a certain responsibility that you assume that I must hear the word of God on this Sunday. So, read whatever you have, I am going to that job. Try to stop me and see what I will fight you back. Did anybody tell you that? You did it on your own. Therefore, you made a certain choice, accepting, accepting a certain responsibility, even in the matter of your election. George, are you catching what I'm saying? Because if you are not, you must make sure you ask your question. Otherwise, just write it down. I will take it on again. We cannot come, we cannot finish it today. So we are going to continue next Sunday. So that's everything you did get. So make sure you write it down. All right. So there's a personal choice and responsibility in the matter. Let's let's let every Bible question must have a Bible answer. Abby, yes, uh, it's God who has been explaining this to me. Let Bible speak. Yes, what's the question? There is another two brothers yes. the Bible that their father sent to put to the leader. One said, I will go. The other one said, I will not go. But the one that he said he wasn't going to go, now wait. By nature? How else? How else? How else? When you finish it, I will go do. There's a small voice, still small voice. And you say you know go go. Oh, George. To the glory of God. I finished from uh, in my former assembly. I finished from uh, Weekday fellowship on the Thursday, and I was to go back to my factory the following day, Friday. And I finished talking with them. They knew I was going. And on the way home, I come from the Lupuju assembly once. On that uh, Lupuju flyover coming to his equally. Driving my car, and then that night, the voice says, So, you are going to your factory tomorrow. And you are leaving my church in this condition, Abby. I ignored it straight away. Kept on driving happily. The voice said again, still small voice. So you are going to you are going to factory tomorrow. And you are living in my church in the condition in which it is, Abby. I'm not, why? Because I'm not, because I'm, what does, what does it matter to me? I'm not the minister. I don't be anything in the church. I'm just go to church, come back. Why is, so, I don't care about this voice. That time, voice says, so you are going back to your church, uh, going back to your family tomorrow. You are living my job in the condition which is happy. I ignored it again. As far as I ignored it that time. When this thing came, carried my car from the speed lane and threw it across the lane. The last time where people were uh, waiting for a bus, I would have finished them there in the middle. Of the and you know that's expressway. Coming to Kui, through me across. I carried my car by on my steering. I said nothing. I put the back car in the bus. The engine was still running. And I came back home. Remember, the church had told me everything was fine. I asked. For as long as I was running my factory there, I used to come 
to Lagos just to fellowship with the brethren, stay some time with them, and then go back. And I'll tell them, they have what they need. And I'll ask, that's everybody going on. And after doing that, they told me everything was fine. Right. Pastor, I said, Pastor, the other ministers, the child of them, some of them, they said, everything was fine. Right. So, which was be telling me now that you are living my church like that. In any case, I'm the minister. So I grabbed it. And he told me, just think you those who have no job like the boss of I will become a body. I drove back home here, yeah, and the first thing I did, I called a son dinner, whom I had given money to buy my ticket for the following month. I said, Cancel them, don't buy. But all of you, go and tell them, come and see me here at six o'clock. Ah, sir, why? Are you not traveling again? I said, just go and deliver my license. I don't want to repeat the story because some of you know it's my idea. They came. And I said to them, this is what I will do. So you people tell me now, did I not ask you when I was having problem with the church? I said there was nothing. I said, hey, so why did this voice speak to me? And when I refused to entertain the voice, I was going to have an accident. I think I was in the speed lane. That is expressway. That time I can move from the speedway. If another car was coming with speed, what would have happened? It would have blown me to pieces. Because I didn't listen. So I said, So you could say there was nothing. So please tell me now that all of you are here pastor, assistant, teacher, everybody was now here. Some leader, everybody who had the position in the church was now here. And me, I didn't have anything there. But they used to come here to say, speak to us about the Bible. So I said, so repeat now. Is there any problem? And they said, no. I said, fine. Then I got up. I said, I'm going to kneel down now. You people pray for me and cast that devil out of me that spoke to me. It was when I asked to know why to kneel down that one of them, the man who is now the overseer of bride assembly, because then he said, no, sir. Don't need that, please sit down. Uh, he did not tell me the truth. I said, What? He said, Please, I just sit down first. We did not tell you everything. They started talking. Brethren, we were talking from that time till the following morning. I couldn't believe. The problems in that place. I hear the two standing. And when it was when we finished talking, you know what they said? And they said, but they are the cause. I said, who? They said, Sir, you are the cause. I said, Oh, this is what they're talking about. Did anyone mention my name in it? They said, No, they said, but you are the cause. I said, why? And because you left us to go to factory. When you were with us, would anybody try all this nonsense that was happening there? I said, yeah. Am I one of you? Am I one of you? Am I, am I, am I, am I a minister among you? They said, ah. We, we know you are now. You say you don't. First of all, you are the one who said the church in order. And you said, don't ever mention my name for any of this. You said what's in order. Are we not always coming to your house? To sit down with you, to hear you talk to us about Bible. So, what else do you want to do? So, no, God, God, God punished you now because you left the church. What do you think was happening there? That's the election. He knew you, you were not listening to the call, I'll teach you a lesson. Because you must do something. What he has called you, what he has made you at his elect. 
you must exercise that choice and accept a certain amount of responsibility in the matter of the election and the predestination that goes along with it. So let the Bible answer for us and we close now. After this, we'll close. We continue next Sunday. So let's read three scriptures. John 3.16, 1 Timothy 2.4, 2 Peter 3.9, Revelation 22.17. I repeat, John 3.16, 1 Timothy 2.4, 2 Peter 3.9, Revelation 22.17. We want to show that even though God called you, predestinated you, chosen you, elect you, whatever name you say it is, you are for known to be. Yes, all of this will not happen without you having to add your own personal choice and responsibility in the matter. So read. Who is who is it for us? John 3.16. For God so loved the world uh -huh. that he gave his only begotten son, uh -huh. that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. You see? Do you see the choice and responsibility there? He said that person will do what? No, before you have that choice, I want you to believe. But believe and what? You must believe in him. But if you have to believe in him, you have made a choice. True or false? You have chosen to believe in him. And so your election will therefore be accomplished. Because if you do not believe in him, there is no way your election can be accomplished. However, God had known that from before the foundation of the world. That when it is time, you will believe him. And you will accept that responsibility of what it takes to believe him. You will read his word. You will live right. You will abandon the world. You will go straight. You will not think like the world. You will not speak like the world. You will not dress like the world. You will not go to place the world. Goes. You will just be the child of God. That is the choice you have chosen. And that is the responsibility you have undertaken, all so that that election will be actually real. Do you understand this, George? Do you accept the second one? First Timothy 2. First Timothy 2 4. Who we have all men to be saved. Yes? Who we have all men to be saved mm -hmm. and to come into the knowledge of the truth. Who we have all men to be saved and to do what? You see your choice then. You must come to the knowledge of the truth. So there's a choice for you there. If you don't come to the knowledge of the truth, will you receive that salvation? The answer is no. So you are saying, actually, I'm going to let them from that time. There is no way you will let you from that time if you would not come to the knowledge of the truth. If you are going to come to the knowledge of the truth, you must follow the law. And you cannot follow the law without knowing the law. And you cannot know the law unless you know the word of the law. And you cannot know the word of the law unless you study the word of the law. So there is something for you to do there. You understand, George? Okay, next one. Second Peter 3 9. Yes. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise. Yes. As so men count slackness, mm -hmm. but is long suffering to us world, mm -hmm. not willing that any should perish, mm -hmm. but that all should come to repentance. Mm -hmm. You see, he doesn't want you have to perish, but must do what? Come to repentance. If you are coming to repentance, is that something you are doing or not? Yes. 
And for you to say you repent, it means you have to make that decision yourself. It's a choice you have to make. I, I'm going to repent. Therefore, the election will not work for me. Okay? Lastly, Revelation 22 17. Revelation, Revelation 22 17. Yes. And the spirits and the bride say, Come, and let him that hear it say, Come, and let him that is at thirst come, and whosoever will, let him take the water of life freely. Uh -huh. Look at what you have to do. Repeat it again. And the spirit and the bride say, Come. First of all, you have to come. Is that a church to make or not? It is, yes? Because, let, you can, because you can say, I will come. Yes? And let him that hear it say, come. <laughs> he who hear it. So you can choose that. I don't want to hear. But you made the choice to hear. That's how you can be in the right. Yes? And let him that is a thirst come. <laughs> You are thirst. A thirst for Coca Cola. A thirst for the word of God. Therefore, you can never say, I thirst after the word of God, or I don't thirst. You made a choice so that your election can walk and you can be part of the bride. You catch it now, George? So this is what it is. Because it will be, it will be a crown respect of persons, you know, a just regard for one and an unjust regard for another, and it is not divine justice for one to be seen by God to be saved. And another one to be seen by God to be damned. So God offers grace to all of us. And I, his invitations, his promises, his provision, and warnings of punishment are general. You see, hear me again. God cannot. Be cruel by having the cruel respect of persons. He cannot say, You, yes, I have a just regard for you. You, I have an unjust regard for you. That is not God. Divine justice does not go that way at all. For one to be chosen by God to be saved, and another one to be done. God will not do that. What does God do? God offers grace to all of us. Grace to all of us. But you don't increase, you make a choice. If you don't have faith, I'm talking about grace. So, his invitations, his provision, his promises, they are all there for you and for me, along with his warning of punishment. So all men are invited to choose. We have to choose. We are invited to come and choose life. And we are warned of everlasting punishment if we fail to choose life. You understand that, George? That is where we end today. You can see that God is not partial. He is giving us the election from the foundation of the world, but there has to be something. You and I will accept it. We'll have to choose. We have to choose. It's working. If truly you are the elect, you are going to choose his way. And when you choose this way, that election becomes a reality in your life. We are going to leave it like that. Next Sunday, we will continue. And I'm going to answer that question. 
Is it possible to have predestination without election? The answer simply is no. But I will explain it next Sunday by God's grace in Jesus. Let us pray. Wow. That's the question before I pray. Before I pray. That's the question. In all this, why did Elohim, before the foundation of the world, see the need to create man or who appears man? He created angels in different colors, even those that worship him every second, like the cherubs and the seraphs. Is it that only our creation will be able to appreciate his full attributes in him as Elohim? And God ultimately are <coughs> doing this by allowing man to fall and experience it as a savior and redeeming entity. Hmm. What this question really says is why did God bother uh -huh, to create man? Because he created angels, different colors. You have so many of them, you have seraphs, you have cherubim. Why is it only in man's own that he has to ask us to do all of these things? I can tell you one thing. At the end of this, at the end of this teaching, I will show you the different elects. In God's creation, it's not only that you will see it, and this question will be answered at that time. Let us pray, Father, in the name of Christ Jesus, we want to thank you. We thank you, God, for gathering us together. We thank you, Lord, for the blessing of listening to you. For your children here, God, and your children on the Zoom platform, Father, everybody waiting to hear to you. We are grateful and thankful to you. All that you have spoken to us today, Father, may you, O oh Lord God, explain it to your children in their private homes, in their offices, in their place of work, even when they are playing. Let us speak, speak to them and begin to make this clear for them that they will understand that which you have spoken to us today in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we are grateful and thankful to you. We just thank you because you love us, and that is why you are telling us all these things. Because you know that the time to go home is here. To go home by the rapture. And that anyone who misses the rapture is going to face a forever time in hell. And while he's there, he will remember all the things he has that he did. They will never be numbered among those who know our opportunities in Jesus. Therefore, as we gather before you and you teach us your word, there God that we sit deep into every portion of our being, spirit, soul, and body. Let they all be ingrained there and then help it to begin to reflect in our lives so that we, oh God Almighty, will be an advert being for Christ. That people will look at us and they will see Christ in us immediately. All your honor, glory, and creation and thanksgiving to our blessing and benefit for the shame of Satan and his forces. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our Father and our God, we just thank you for this. It's a new Sunday, it's a new day, it's a new week. And only you have brought us to see. Father, be pleased you to see us today. If there be next Sunday, and rather have very struck to move us from here. Father, bring us together again. And during the week, watch over us, protect us, provide for us, heal us, fight the battle of life for us. Every machination of Satan and his forces directed against us, Father, may you destroy all of them. We thank you, Lord, because we know you have answered this prayer. For in Jesus Christ's name, we pray. Amen. Arise, O Lord God, come down, show us thy mercy. For the time to fill us thy 
and we plead the Lord of all for the dead to earth. That is when the dead will feel more than all of them. For yet the serpent is called and the serpent is called. That is our portion in Jesus Christ's name. We pray. Amen. Amen. Receive the priestly blessing. The Lord bless and keep you. The Lord is one shine upon you and be gracious unto you. And this is confident and support you. The Lord bless you with you. The Lord bless you with The grace. The love of God. The Lord is one shine upon they with us now for the land. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the mighty living master Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. God bless you all. I thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you.